Welcome to Dragon's Lair Update. This month, lacrosse and track take center stage. Men's lacrosse battles Nassau, track defends our national championship, and Coach Carey's Dragons take on CCBC Essex. We'll start with men's lacrosse. Howard hosts an established national contender. Mark Zinno anchors our coverage. Thanks, Diane. Lacrosse analyst Chris Carey joins me for a classic Maryland-New York battle. Howard takes on sixth-ranked Genesee. The Dragons are an NJCAA D1 program. They compete in Region 20. The Region 20 tournament champ secures an automatic bid to nationals. In men's lacrosse, there's also one at-large selection up for grabs. Last year, that bid went to the Region 20 runner-up, and a win against Genesee would look good on Howard's resume. Dragons are 2-1, and one, coming off a 20-goal win against Morris. Chris, what does Howard like to do on offense? Howard likes to work the ball around, creating situations where the defense is out of place. Then they find the open man for the easy goal. Genesee is an NJCAA D1 program that competes in Region 3. They're also the defending Region 3 West champions. Cougars are one of the best teams in the country. They've earned three consecutive trips to the Final Four. Chris, what do you expect to see from Genesee? I expect to see Genesee work the ball around, but try to get it to their main scores. Nick Gray on midfield and Joshua West are on attack. Howard and Genesee take the field next. Let's go to the Dragons Lair. First half, Robert Kitchen goes right, Ali dodge, high to low, Andrew Cilio with the save. Matt Morton loses possession. Jesse Jimerson pushes him down. A hard slash from Jimerson draws the flag. Howard's man up unit takes the field. They work it up top to Tom Klotz. He fires it into the corner. Great shot by number one in white. Klotz gets the ball, sees the room he has, and lets one rip. Man up opportunity now for Genesee. Mitchell Kinney moves it to Quinn Calligan. Back up top to Kinney. He changes planes and gets the goal. Defense needs to slide quicker. If you give a player that much space, he's usually going to find the back of the net. Matt Gray does a great job coming from behind, drawing the defenders, and finding an open Dan Kaplan on the back post. Kaplan gives Howard the lead off the feed from Gray. Second quarter, 14 minutes. Extra man opportunity for Genesee. The Cougars keep the ball moving. Get it to Tyler Skaronski. Cilio with the save. He hauls in the rebound. One minute till halftime. Defensive showdown in Columbia, Maryland. Cody Martin operating from behind the cage. Feeds it inside. Loose ball. Jimerson wins the ground ball for Genesee. Terrific clear. The pass catches Joshua Wester in stride. Sends it ahead to Dana Ray. High to low. Ray ties the game. These turnovers are turning into goals for Genesee. Ten seconds till halftime. Cody Martin to Ryan Hudson. Sticks it past the keeper. Howard's fired up. That's a great skip pass. The defenders have sunk down, leaving Hudson open for the goal. Third quarter, Doug Ellsworth attacks the short stick, drops it back to Skaronski, and he fires one low. Genesee ties it up. Hudson to Gray. The Cougars give him a cushion. Gray scores from long range. 4-3 lead for the Dragons. Jimmy Smith up against Jerron Brooks. Brooks forces the turnover. Travis Harrison wins the ground ball for Howard. Terrific pass from Genesee. Wester behind the cage, looking to feed. Quick pass to Dana Ray. High to low, Genesee ties the game. Wester draws the pole. Howard doesn't slide. Wester from point blank range finishes with the left hand. Fourth quarter, the Cougars have it. Skaronski's pass is deflected. The ground ball rolls all the way to midfield. Brock Went pushes it to Kaplan. Here he comes in transition. Kaplan outruns the long pole, goes airborne. Kaplan with the dive shot, he ties the game. Tremendous play from the Howard High School grad. Kaplan sees an opening to goal and finishes the shot with style. Wester matched up with Harrison. Slick move, he gets underneath. Wester fires, Cilio makes the stop and controls the rebound. Six minutes, we're tied at five. Genesee puts the pole on Went. He passes to Hudson, can't haul it in. Ellsworth gets it, Gray knocks it loose. Big hit by Hudson, draws the flag. Extra man opportunity for Genesee. Mitchell Kinney doesn't waste any time. He winds up and fires a haymaker. Cougars regain the lead late in the fourth. No one goes to pressure the ball, allowing number six and goal to score the potential game winner. Last chance for Howard. Went draws the pole behind the goal. Goes to Gray. Gray to Kaplan. Cougars slide, feeds it to Morton. The shot is high. Genesee comes back to win. Let's send it down to Matt Stovall. 
Tom, almost pull this one out. What are your thoughts after this game? Um, actually, believe it or not, it's, it's really positive. Um, this is the first time we faced competition other than Army Prep that has really brought it to us. And, and we got kinds of guys that, that really rise against the, to the occasion, and I think that's what we saw today. And it's just a matter of making sure our offense and trusting our offense, and when they bury it, we'll wipe teams. We'll wipe teams. How did it feel to see your goalkeeper stand up to some tough shots today? Oh, it was incredible. We knew 23 had had a great shot, and we knew we were going to put a lot of pressure on him, and that would open up looks for other guys. And But that's just a matter of trust. We trust that our goal – we don't even slide. We, we trust that our defensemen will have their matchups, and if we don't, our goalie's going to stuff it. So, Andrew, how did it feel playing top competition out there today? Uh, it felt great. Like he said, uh, our only competition was Army prep, and so we were just pumped up from the get-go, like getting ready for this game because we knew that they were going to bring it. And I think that as a team, we did very well today. How were you able to control so many rebounds? Just how it happened, I guess. Um, I was just able to put my stick where the ball was coming and able to control it. So, Tom, playing a, a good team like Genesee, how, does, um, how do you feel going into region competition coming up here? Oh, I think this, this is the greatest thing for us. So, you know, the season is very long, and, and we really have to value the teams that are going to make sure our region standing strong. So today it, it, it hurts to lose, but go to sleep tonight, wake up in the morning, forget about it, keep investing every day. We got a great trip up to New York to play against Suffolk, and, and I mean, we're going to go to their house and just steal it from them and then hopefully peak at the right time and, and really bring it to the region. Uh, great effort out there today, gentlemen. Good luck going forward. For Dragons Lair Update, I'm Matt Stovall. Next up for the Dragons, arguably their toughest opponent on the schedule. Howard takes on Nassau. Coach Faust Dragons are coming off an overtime win against Suffolk. That win ended Howard's four-game losing streak to Suffolk, dating back to 2008. Dragons have lost seven straight to Nassau. They've only beaten Nassau twice. And current Major League Lacrosse All-Star Pete Poyon suited up for Howard in both those wins. Chris, how can the Dragons score the upset? Howard can win this game if they keep the ball on their offensive end, slow down Nassau's high-powered offense, and take good shots. The more time Howard has the ball, the better their chance at winning this game. Nassau has won 21 national championships. The Lions have reached the national championship in each of the past two seasons, losing twice to Onondaga. Nassau enters the game with a 5-1 record, and they're ranked number three in the nation. Chris, please describe the Lions' offense. Nassau's biggest strength is how well-balanced his offense is. They have multiple players on the team that have multiple goals and several players who have over 10 goals this season. Howard and Nassau face off next. Let's go to the Dragons' lair. First half, Tom Klotz attacks the shorty, blows by him. Great goal by Tom Klotz. He takes the defender up top, does a simple dodge, and puts it away. Nassau sends another short stick at Klotz. Different shorty, same result. Klotz goes to Ryan Hudson, he scores! Howard comes out swinging. Brock Went draws the pole, goes to Cody Martin, passes off the mark. Ground ball. Martin and Alex Salvadori battle it out for possession. Corbin Schmucker gets in the mix. Joseph Catalanati goes to pick it up. He's hammered by Prosper Odalatu. What a hit! Martin knows he's gonna get hit and sticks it in the back of the net. Sticking with the ball helps turn this broken play into a goal. Second quarter, extra man offense is on the field for Nassau. Lions swing it to Eric Marzaka. Gets his hands free and cuts the lead to one. Marzaka working behind the cage. Excellent move. Gets above the goal line extended and puts it away. Nassau scores four unanswered and takes the lead. Extra man opportunity now for Howard. Matt Morton inside to Dan Kaplan. Passionate first half display from Howard. 8-7 lead for the Dragons. That is some great ball movement to find the open man for the shot. Third quarter, Nassau's extra man unit takes the field. Lions work it behind the cage. Here come the cutters. Travis Wall cuts to the crease and scores. Shane DeBerg does a great job of keeping his eyes open to find Wall for the goal. Nassau once again scores four unanswered, 10-8 Lions. Kaplan escaped two poles, connects with Went, overhand rip and he buries it. What a shot from the sophomore out of Ellicott City. Tim Graff draws the slide, excellent ball movement from Nassau. Marzaka does the honors, three goal lead for the Lions. Goalkeeper Jake Siciliano vacates the crease, passes to Daniel Cesare, looking to clear it. Kaplan with the hit, ball is loose, empty net and Kaplan takes advantage. A great defensive play leads to one of the easiest goals you'll ever see. Fourth quarter, nine minutes. Tom Klotz makes short work of the defender. 
Draws two poles, finds Morton on the weak side. He shoots, it's in. We have a one point game. DeBoer takes it into the box. Long stick midi, Zach McElroy stays with him. Travis Harrison blocks the shot and delivers the hit. Big time stand from Howard. Five minutes, 12-11 Nassau. Graf up against Ricky Dubois. McElroy's there for the backup. He strips him. Ground ball. Rolls to Marzaka. But Cilio dives on it. Here comes the clear. Cilio goes to Harrison. One man ride. He goes right by wall. Harrison's all alone. He changes planes. High to low. Harrison ties the game. Great recognition by Harrison. Seeing that no one is coming to pick him up, he goes right in for the goal. On the other end of the field, Brandon Watson draws the pole, gets above goal line extended, and finishes with his left. Nassau reclaims the lead. Four goal performance from the freshman out of Wontaw High School. Went up against Patrick Ryan, gives it to Martin. Salvador is all over him. He knocks it loose. Gray wins the ground ball for Howard. Nassau's defense closes in on him. Gray shoots, takes the hit, swarming deep for the Lions. Two minutes, Howard needs a stop on defense. Watson draws the pole behind the cage. Terrific dodge, slick pass to Marzaka. Moves it to Wall, what a play from Nassau's offense. The Lions hold off Howard, Matt Stolvos with Tom Klotz and Jerron Brooks. All right, Tom, this was a heck of a game. What are your thoughts? This game is just really about putting a complete game together. So here comes Nassau. I think they're second or third in JUCO right now, and we're ninth. And no one expected this to be a game. And the score doesn't really represent the kind of game it was because they got a, a nice couple goals there at the end. Um, but the reality is, is we're going to see them. We're going to see them. And we told that to them while I was shaking their hands. I was like, great game. I'll see you later this year. And they know that. They know that walking out of here. Jerome, what are your thoughts after this battle out here? Uh, physical game, very physical. Uh, we, uh, we like to push the tempo, and today we had to slow it down uh, because this is a very physical game. And uh, I think we played well in the beginning, just let it slip away at the end, uh, but we'll see him again. So, so Thomas, this is a very close game. I know last year your team lost a couple close one-goal games. What's it going to take to get over that hump when the region play hits? It's going to take every day in practice. It's going to take every day in practice looking at your teammate that you respect and you admire, but saying to them that the only way I can respect you is by giving it to you every day. And, and that's one thing that we haven't been doing enough at practice is, is just getting really competitive. And that kind of style to practice, if we really begin to bring that, will prepare us for this. None of this will be a surprise. Today was a little bit of a surprise for some of our younger guys. They've never seen a battle like this because this battle was not only physical, but it was mental. And that's something that a lot of guys don't have experience with, but we're, we're testing now we're tried now and, and we're gonna bring that to every game we play Jerron talk about the mental aspect of this game how will this game help you mentally going forward uh, Nassau they, they talked a lot of trash out in the field uh, they were very live and into the game and I think that that helped us stay cool uh, and I think it's gonna help us when we play teams like Essex and Hartford and Anne Arundel in the region I think that's really gonna make make the difference in uh, in the wins we're gonna get in those games well great effort out there today gentlemen for Dragon's Lair Update, I'm Matt Stovall. It's a pleasure to welcome two-time U.S. Lacrosse High School Coach of the Year and former team captain at Western Michigan University, head coach Eric Faust. Welcome, Coach. Thank you. How do you think your team did against Nassau? I think we played well. I think, um, I think my coaching staff and, and players and um, you know, I, I, I think as a whole, looking at the whole game, all four quarters, everyone did their job. Um, I was very happy with uh, our preparation. Uh, the guys followed our plan. We had a good scout. And, um, you know, unfortunately, being tied at five, or being tied at 12 with five minutes left, and then giving up five goals in a row, it kind of put us in a, a tough position to come back. But, you know, we were leading at the half, and. And we played hard throughout, so I'm very proud of my team. Now, what are some of the characteristics that you like about this year's team? Um, very, very good leadership. Uh, and then uh, the, the bench, I mean, just everyone is involved. It's almost a, a family-like atmosphere. Um, this is my second spring with HCC, and the dynamic of this team is a lot different from last. But uh, not to take anything away from last year, but uh, 
You know, these guys seem to all get along very well. They spend time together outside of lacrosse, and, um, you know, it's, it's a good group of young men. Talk to me about your coaching philosophy. You're a new head coach here at HCC. What's your philosophy? Well, in terms of um, strategy, uh, fundamentals first. Um, I think uh, if you look at any sport, the team that demonstrates the greatest mastery of fundamentals generally wins. Um, and so, you know, I really preach fundamentals, and that's a big part of every practice plan. Um, a lot of the guys don't like it because they want to play, but, um, you know, there's an easier answer to that. If you can't pick up a ground ball, you can't throw or catch, you can't score. Um, and then, you know, really opening up the opportunity for everyone to get better um, and every day being a competition. Eventually I'd like Howard uh, Community College to attract student athletes where there is literally a battle every single practice for every place on the field and there's always someone nipping at somebody else's heels trying to get playing time. Um, and so, you know, thriving in a competitive environment but uh, doing so you know, with the right morals and, you know, just the right approach. So you're the kind of coach that you're going to take it one game at a time. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day or the end of the week or two weeks from now, you're going to take a look at what you've done and say, wow, we're a contender for the Nationals. Hopefully. Yeah. Well, I, I hope so too, Coach. <laughs> Good luck the rest of your season. Thank you very much. It's time for women's lacrosse. Howard faces off against Region 20 rival CCBC Essex. Mark Zinno anchors our coverage. Thanks, Diane. Lacrosse analyst Chris Carey is back to break down this pivotal in-state matchup. Howard and Essex are D1 Region 20 rivals. In May, Region 20 and Region 15 schools will compete in the District B tournament. The champion and runner-up advance to the Final Four. Howard and Essex finished third and fourth in last year's district tournament. Both schools looking to take the next step this season. Howard's 0-1. Chris, what do you expect to see from the Dragons? I expect to see Howard having good passes and trying to maintain possession of the ball. They are good on the draw this year, which is a huge boost to the team. Essex is also 0-1. They're ranked fifth in the nation. Chris, how could the Dragons shut down Essex? If the Dragons play good defense, keep the ball on the offensive end, and wait to take good shots, they should be able to beat Essex. Also, they need to watch out for number two, Carly Grudson, who leads Essex with nine goals and nine assists this year. Howard and Essex renew their rivalry. Let's go to the Dragons' lair. First half, here's Lisa Bianchini. A great move by Bianchini to get around the defender and score the goal. Sofia Bavaro operating from behind the cage for Essex. Howard's defense needs to tighten up. They're going too far outside and getting beat on the inside. A minute 42 until halftime, we're tied at five. Charlotte Wilkinson takes the draw for Howard. She's up against Peyton Liberto. Erica Heafy wins the ground ball for Howard. A textbook example of sticking with the ball, keeping your eyes downfield, and finding the open player for the goal. 12 seconds left in the half. Carly Grudson, nice open field dodge, sends it ahead to Cami Justice, tie game. Second half, Quinta Collins keeps it herself, improves her angle, and she buries it low. 7-6 Dragons. Liberto, great pass ahead to Justice, she scores! The slides have to come from high to low in order to avoid a one-on-one -on -one with the goalie. Free position shot for Essex. Big time save from Lanaya Preston. It stays with Essex. Olivia Bowman dodges the alley. Lisa Don is there defensively for Howard. Preston with another save. Taylor Villarreal connects with Bavaro on the doorstep. She converts the overhand shot. 9-8 Essex. Tortowitz is operating from behind the cage, looking to distribute. Nice move by Charlotte Wilkinson. She creates separation, calls for the ball, and gets it done on the offensive end. Tie ball game. Wilkinson up against Liberto. Left hand finish from the freshmanette of Howard High School. Back and forth we go. McBee sidearms it in and ties it up. Extra man opportunity for Essex. Villarreal gets above, goal line extended. The aggressive move results in a free position for the Knights. Villarreal high to low, and it's in. Essex regains the lead. On the other end of the field, Twardowitz up against Villarreal. Liberto picks it off. Huge defensive stand for the Knights. That is a great example of the slides being where they needed to be, preventing what would have been an easy goal. Officials called it a foul. Free position for Villarreal. Fires a bouncer. Denied by Lanaya Preston. 
11 minutes, McBee fires Preston with another save, keeps it a one goal game. Here comes Bavaro in transition, unsettled opportunity. She takes her time, overhand rip, she finds the back of the net. Essex scores three unanswered and takes control of the game. Six minutes, Michelle Sparling one-on-one -on -one with Villarreal. She gets inside, Sparling brings Howard back within one. What a play from the freshman out of Jessup. Four minutes, here's Carly Grudson. There's contact, she's gonna get a free position shot. Grudson goes high, she puts it away. Howard is in trouble. Ensuing draw, Wilkinson versus Grudson. Wilkinson comes up with her 11th draw control of the game. Here she comes in transition. Wilkinson shoots, perfectly timed check from Paige Mason, seals it for Essex. The Knights hold on to win, let's send it down to Matt Stovall. When I, you had some great saves, unfortunately the game didn't go your way in the end. What are your thoughts after this one? Uh, that we played hard and it was just sad how we couldn't bring it together at the end. But I think next game we can do a lot better and we know what we're going to work on and what to do. So, Lenaya, what do you plan to work on for the next game? Definitely, I want to work on my clearing and being more pumped and reacting faster to the ball next time. It's definitely something that was a little hard because it was so cold out here today. All right, Charlotte, how are you able to battle the elements out here? It feels like it's like 20 degrees, pouring rain. How did you deal with it? I mean, I just fought through it. I mean, you just got to keep moving, especially off ball, to kind of like get it going. But it was freezing and it was hard, but you just got to keep moving. So um, how do you plan to use this game? You know, Essex, they're in the region. What can you learn from this game that'll help you the next time you play them? I mean, no matter what the weather condition is, you just got to play like you would every other game as hard as possible. I mean, we were all pretty lazy going to ball. We only played 50%. So, I mean, like I said, like off ball, just got to keep moving. Don't let this ruin everything. Have like, keep your heads up. Just go with a positive mindset, but it was tough. All right, ladies, great luck going forward. For Dragon's Lair Update, I'm Matt Stovall. My next guest has posted back-to-back -back winning seasons for the first time in the history of our women's lacrosse program. She's also a licensed official for high school and club lacrosse in Howard County and Carroll County. It's a pleasure to welcome head coach Diana Carey. Welcome, coach. Thank you very much, Diane. How do you think our team did against CCBC Essex? Well, we struggled a bit. Um, I think that overall, I would say some good things as far as the fact that we had possession. We have a very good uh, player who takes the draw, and we do get possession. I think she won majority of the draws. Um, the problem is, though, is that we haven't been out in the field much. The weather's really hampered us, um, and so we've been sort of stuck either in a gym or on the blacktop, and therefore there was a lot of elements to our game that just weren't there. Um, clearing was a huge issue for us. Uh, we just really struggled with it. It's something that we haven't been practicing a lot because of our limitations due to the weather. Um, but I think overall, I think we learned a lot from it. I think we have some firepower, which is really good. I think we have a lot of players stepping up. And so I think that, you know, next time I think we'll be able to get them. So what is the characteristics of this team this year? Well, I'm very lucky. I mean, every year I've been here, I'd say that the girls that come out to play lacrosse are just a great group. There's a, a wonderful bond that goes on between all of them. They all get along very, very well. They do a lot of fun things together outside of lacrosse, outside of school. They help each other in school. Um, so it's just, it's a really nice, nice group. They're, they have a really nice bond and I'm, I'm really fortunate to be able to have them. Now tell me who's stepping up in the program this year for your players. Well I have an amazing freshman class. Um one of my uh, leaders on the freshman class is uh, also, she is a captain. She was nominated as captain by her teammates. Her name is Sh uh, Charlotte Wilkinson. And Charlotte um, has uncanny ability to take the draw. She was third, ranked third in the county last year for all of high schools um, for uh, draw possession. Um, so that really is incredible and I have to say so far she's really lived up to it because possession is the name of the game if you don't have the ball you're not going to win. Um, now if we could just not throw the ball away that would be really good. Um, and then I have a couple of other players, um, a young lady who is a stellar athlete, uh, Lisa uh, Biantini, we call her LB. She is a fabulous athlete. She is a sponge. Everything that we say to her she soaks right in and she does it automatically and you don't have to correct her again for the same thing. She is definitely, definitely going to be a big impact for our team. What do you think this potential is for your team this year? Well, if we can correct some of our uh, 
errors and fix some of our problems and um, you know I think we could I think we could do very well uh, I'd like to see us go to nationals will we win it all I'm not sure but we certainly have the potential thank you coach good luck the rest of your season thank you Diane up next we'll hear from Steve Musselman Dragon Slayer update will return after a short break summers for everyone at Howard Community College Make learning fun with camps and programs for kids and teens. Pick up credits in one of our many convenient summer sessions. Upgrade your job skills. Explore a hobby. Classes fill fast, so register today. Go to howardcc.edu slash summer. Summers for everyone at Howard Community College. Welcome back. My next guest brought home Howard Community College's first national championship. Co-head coach Steve Musselman joins me now. Welcome, Coach. Thank you, Diane. So how excited are you about this year's team? We're, we're very excited. We think we have potential. It, it's so funny. We just had the first stats go into the national database. And Monday morning, um, Eric and I were both looking at the performance list and seeing who put in, who ranked what. And uh, we feel we have the ability to do this again. It, it'll be definitely be a lot tighter and be a, a bigger effort on our part because we lost some athletes, but we gained some in other events. But well, we're very excited about the possibility. So tell us about your standout athletes. For the women, um, we have Ashley Doloff. She, uh, she's a transfer. She went to Glenelg Country School and then tried to walk on basketball Old Dominion. And she ended up here, a great kid, just was trying to figure things out. And Eric found her in the weight room, she started training this fall, and already she's unbeaten in the 400 meters. Uh, and she's, we're competing against four-year schools at this time. So she's right now, of course, top the performance list, and she'll run the 200 at UMBC this week. And Gabrielle Petty has been doing well. She's from Buffalo, and she had a great cross-country season for us. And Alexander Kennedy, another transfer, a local girl, went to James Madison, fell out of place, came back, and she's already leading performance list in the 1500 and 800. Now for the men, we have Ian Woods from Mount St. Joe, uh, again, premier hurler, and also Chucky Fisher from Mount St. Joe. For some reason, we're getting a lot of kid, local kids from the private schools now, which is a good thing. They're, they're doing well. Uh, Gary Samuel, Acumon Cross Country Nationals, is leading the 5,000 list, and Alex Warfield is also in the rankings for the 800 and 1500. So, we're, we're, we're looking good. We're missing some field events, people. We have, still have some throwers, but if anything, we're hurting on jumpers, but last year we didn't have the two hurdlers, so it's, it's going to be a little trade-off right now. So last year you won the Nationals with the men's program. Yes. This year, how have the women been performing for you as a whole? The women have been doing quite well. You know, Tamara Acoria, again, a solid sprinter. You know, working very hard every day. Uh, the women's distance will make an impact this year. We had, there's the team that did very well at Nationals Cross Country, and they made a commitment for the track program this year. Uh, I think last year, I think we could be top five for the women this year. We're, we're very excited about the possibilities. Good luck, Coach, with the rest of your season. Thank you, Diane. You can watch highlights on game day. Go to youtube.com slash HCC Dragon Sports for the latest HCC highlights. Tune in Friday, May 9th for an all new Dragon's Lair update. Thanks for watching, and remember, go Dragons!